Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, what a week. Um, we started off about this time last week at about $70,000. Now we're back down into the 50s. So what's going on? A lot of things happened this week. We had the Fed meeting um, where they kept the rates the same. We've also got, you know, war and talks of recession, all kinds of things going on in the background. So stick around, guys, we're going to get into all of it. Uh, but before we do, guys, it is a new month as of a few days ago. So uh, you know what that means, guys. Uh, we've got a new animal sanctuary that we're spotlighting this month, and that is uh, the Zend. Final Farm and Sanctuary, guys. This is their website. Um, this is uh, thezendtx.org. I will leave that in the description of all of my videos this month. But you go over here, you can, you can see right on their front page, it says become a sponsor. Hit that and it will take you to their PayPal where you can donate a few bucks to help these animals out. Um, Guys, I want to just jump uh, right here to their residence. Um, maybe, if it'll go. Uh, it's, so this says, the Zen Kids. Hello, fellow animal lovers. We are currently caring, caring for 78 rescued farm animals, ranging across 12 different species. We are so fortunate to be their stewards through this life and consider it to be one of our greatest honors as we provide long-term compassionate care for their entire lives. We need other animal lovers to support us in our mission and with our work. We are not only their primary caregivers, but the humans in this world who promise them to use their, our voices to show the world that they deserve so much better. They are not products for us to use or profit from. They are all unique individuals who deserve respect, love, and peace, guys. So these guys are caring for quite a, I mean, 78 animals, guys. Can you even imagine? Like, I, I personally can't imagine that. I have um, five animals at the time and it seems like a constant job with all of them uh you know every every two two minutes it's, it's honestly something that i'm doing with these with my five animals these guys have 78 animals guys so it takes not only a lot of time and effort to take care of that that many animals but it also takes a lot of money to uh to support and care for that many animals so if you've got a few dollars please go over and and help them out they do have a facebook as well instagram they've got a TikTok and a youtube but i will leave the um their uh the zendtx.org i will leave that link in the description of my videos as well as a link to their paypal so go over, help, help them out if you've got a few dollars that you can spare. Now, guys, let's get into what's going on. Um, you know, last weekend we were kind of just ending a uh, Bitcoin conference and there was a lot of positive news, you know, politicians talking about adding Bitcoin to uh, the, the strategic reserve of the United States. Um, and then followed up shortly this week, we had big movement from all of that Bitcoin that the government holds. And so people are thinking that they're gonna sell. So that's one part of the, the, uh, the sell pressure that we've seen this week. We also do have Mt. Gox still distributing Bitcoin, which, I mean, honestly, I think that's a pretty big nothing burger. A lot of those people that are getting that Bitcoin back are Bitcoiners. And uh, most of them aren't going to sell that, I don't think. So 
Um, but they are getting to the bottom of the barrel on their distributions. So that is going to be coming to an end pretty quick. Um, we also do have this on the macroeconomic side, guys. We do have more tension in the Middle East. So news on that is it kind of goes like this, guys. So Israel was in negotiations for the release of the remaining hostages that were taken in uh, October 7th by Hamas, right? And things were looking good. Things were looking like we might find a resolution to this whole thing. And then Netanyahu went and assassinated the negotiator. Blows my mind. You're in negotiations. Like, it's so obvious that, that the Israeli government is, is not in for a peaceful resolution. It's, it's insane. Like, they literally assassinated the guy that was negotiating this deal for the release of those hostages and a resolution to this conflict. Now, uh, with that, Hezbollah kind of retaliated on that um, assassination. And then Israel went back and bombed Lebanon and tried to, you know, killed a bunch of Hezbollah, whatever, you know, and now it just kind of is continuing. Um, in the, in the words of Jack Black and Tenacious, Tenacious D, Hornet's Nest. Guys, it's a huge, huge mess over there. It just blows me away that you're in negotiations for a resolution and you kill the guy that you're negotiating with. It, the, uh... So anyways, that is also playing into this negative uh, price action that we're seeing this week. You know, usually when tensions rise um, as far as war goes, People historically have sold their investments and get back into the dollar or gold. Um, so if you're still living under a rock and think that, I mean, somehow don't see money debasement happening, um, I guess maybe that's something people are doing. Uh, also, you know, People are people selling Bitcoin like it's a stock and getting into a safe haven of gold or or um, or cash is a little bit backwards in my opinion, but it is happening, guys. It uh, you know Bitcoin unfortunately is still kind of seen by a lot of people as that risk asset. Like I said, if you've been living under a rock and haven't seen money uh, debasement, I guess maybe it's a risk, ask it, a risk asset. <laughs> to me, it's one of the safest things you could ever be in, but a lot of people don't see it that way. Um, so let's jump over to, there's one other thing, guys. We did have that live stream of the Fed, uh, the Fed speech by Jerome Powell. And there was a reporter that brought up the SOM rule. And so ever since that, the crypto community has been, been kind of go, going crazy with that. Uh, and there's a lot of talk pretty much everywhere about us being in a recession now. So I want to jump over and show you what this SOM rule is. Uh, we're going to jump over to this chart. And you can kind of see, so um, this is percentage points um, basically on, um, so this is the SOM rule, recession indicator. But what this indicator is, is it's kind of um, how fast un unemployment is moving, 
over the last, you know, whatever period. But you can see right here, we are climbing and we are at about a, a point of like 0.5% percentage points. Um, but, you know, people are saying, well, we're at these previous levels where we've, you know, back here in 2008, we're at about this level where, where it kicked off and we shot into this massive un unemployment. And this was a recession recession. We, you know, you go back to the uh, early 2000s where we had the dot com bust. We're at about that level. Uh, we did see that level. I mean, we again, guys, the pandemic was a complete black swan. But you can see we shot up. We spiked majorly in 2020, um, I guess, which was considered a recession. Very, very, very short lived recession, but uh, we did have that. So, this is the SOM rule that people are saying, you know, we're already at levels that indicate we're in a recession. Um, but, you know, I, I can, I see this both ways, honestly, guys. Um, I've been talking for months that the Fed was kind of missing the plot on job numbers and the labor market. Um, so are they cutting too late? It's, it's a very possible, very big possibility. Um, you know, if you, if you think back to what the fed was doing in 2021 as well, you know, a lot of people, myself included thought they were crazy for not raising rates soon enough and they didn't you know they let that go if you remember if you were watching powell back in 2021 he kept saying in his press uh statements we we don't see any inflation right now you know we don't see any signs of inflation meanwhile all the non npc people the real people out in the world are going to the grocery store and going what you don't see inflation. Um, so it was kind of mind boggling back then that they weren't acting sooner. Um, and I think maybe that's the case here. I don't know how much of a recession we are going into. To Powell's credit, uh, he did have an important point that he did bring up in his speech uh, Wednesday. And that was that we're in this kind of post pandemic, really weird economic situation where all kinds of, of rules have been broken. So when we're looking at rules like, uh, like this Psalm rule, I mean, how reliable is it in the economic system that we we find ourselves in right now? I just don't know if if it applies. There are a lot of indicators that are still showing that the economy is in in part at least doing pretty well. But guys, in the last week, we have seen stocks. We've seen a lot of the magnificent seven, the big tech stocks, Amazon. Google um, or Alphabet. Uh, Nvidia has dropped since its high. I mean, I think it's over, it's down at about 30% down, uh, which for traditional stocks is, is no short feat. Um, so there is that. I, I do think some of that money is trading into other uh, lower cap stocks. So I'm still kind of on the fence as to whether we're in really a full blown recession right now or not. But I do agree that the, the Fed is lagging on their action, uh, just like they were in 2021. So, uh, I don't know guys, the, the positive part there is they've all but signaled that they're definitely going to be cutting in September. So, you know, who, who knows, uh, I guess we'll, we'll wait and watch and see what happens there. 
But I want to jump over to the charts really quick here, guys. So as you can see, uh, last week we were right up here, right at about $70,000. We've come down right now. We're at 59.3, which is a good 15.5% move in a week. Uh, good, I say. Um, not good, but you know, 15 and a half percent again, nothing that Bitcoin hasn't done in the past guys. And if you look back just a few weeks ago, we were down here at 53. So hang in there. This is, this is nothing new. And honestly, guys, I want to jump out. Um, let's jump to the weekly chart and get this all zoomed out so again looking at the having dates i mean where are we we are from having to where we are now um where 16 bars okay so We are right about here, guys. This is about where we're at post having. If you look historically at the having cycles, this is just choppy sideways action, just like we've been seeing. And we are coming up upon that time historically when things go parabolic. It's what people call uh, crypto autumn or crypto fall um and that is the real time when bitcoin moves guys so when in doubt you just got to zoom out and look at these previous cycles you know we were about right here when this happened uh 2017 cycle and we went you know it this is a logarithmic chart so this little blip looks like nothing but guys it was several hundred or thousand percent gain back here in in 2017 so you know look at it this way guys we are you know we're chopping sideways this whole six month action or whatever it's been has been enough to make you want to scratch your eyeball eye, eyeballs out but we are getting closer and closer to that that crypto autumn, you know, parabolic move. So hang in there. Um, I think recession or not, you know, the Fed is going to do its thing. And that thing is mon monetary debasement. So I can't think of a better place to be than in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, guys, to be honest. But short term, it could affect Bitcoin's price to the downside. So uh, big picture. We've got a ways to go. Um, let's see. Was there, um, there was something else I was going to say about this chart, but it's escaped me. So guys, again, um, weekly recap like this on Sunday, I plan on doing every week. Um, yeah, we've seen a bad week. Hopefully, you know, the coming weeks can can kind of recover some of that back. I think we still probably see some more sideways action in the short term. Um, and guys, I've been saying uh, to to some of my closest friends, you know, this was back um, 2023. I was telling people, you know, if it was me, I would be dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency until about September of 2025. And the reason I was saying that was because historically the bull market lasts so long and what that time frame is pointing to on several different measures is sometime in October of 2026. 
So if you dollar cost the average in until about September of 2024, all of your investments, if you are going to time this cycle, all of your investments theoretically should be um, in that long-term uh, investment taxable, you know, whatever class. It'll be a long-term investment and you won't get um, short-term capital gains on your taxes if, if you... Theoretically, guys, if if we do go in this bull market until the fall of uh, uh, of 2026, all of your investments will be long term by then. So I've been telling people, you know, September of 2024, and guys, we are coming upon that. So um, you know that really just applies if you're just looking to time the cycle. Obviously, I think we're going to explode you know further to the upside after september that's not i'm not saying that you know we're going to hit hit september and that's the end of it but uh it just becomes a little more risky because you've got a higher tax liability after that if you do cash out before that year mark so um anyways guys i do think we've got some some exciting things coming ahead of us. Stick in there. Uh, we will have, hopefully have Sam and Andy back on the channel next week. We would have had them this week, but uh, they were they were both uh, had other obligations that they were taking care of. Uh, probably out touching some grass, which good for them. Uh, it's definitely been a week where you should be out getting your mind off the charts and I am about to go do that myself. Um, I've got a few people coming over to play some music. Uh, that's why I've got my, my cats and bass shirt on <laughs> for all, all of the music playing that will be had today. Uh, best time of the week for me. Um, but guys, I've got to say, you know you're playing music with the right people when they write a song. You don't have any input on it, but they come up with a song about black cats and coffee. That's that's how you know you're in good company. So uh, <laughs> anyways, guys, I'm going to sign off. Uh, look forward to the next video. If you guys haven't, please like and subscribe. Hit the hit the thumbs up for me. Let me know if I'm, you know, giving you guys some good content. Um, but yeah, again, hopefully next week we'll have Andy and Sam back on the channel. And until uh, my next video, guys, hang in there. I know it's it's tough, but um, really, we're just chopping around. So hang in there, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.